This is the large earthquake outlook for the remainder of the year, with some notable patterns repeating from the past. First, let me pull up the largest earthquakes for the last 30 days, in order of strength. Remember, Earth should see 3 magnitude 6 per week on the long-term average, and we've only had one in the last month. We haven't seen a magnitude 7 earthquake since February, and those are expected about once every 20 days. What this amounts to is the beginning of an earthquake drought similar to the one we saw just last year. Three and a half months have gone by without a magnitude 7, and we expected about 11 more magnitude 6 earthquakes than we got in the last month. Back in 2017, we went nearly six months without a magnitude 7 event, the longest such stretch on record, and for almost three straight months we were notably below average in the magnitude 6 range. You will recall, last year ended with an amazing flurry of magnitude 7 earthquakes and the 8.2 in Mexico. Now let's take a moment to recall the solar polar magnetic fields. Up top is the total solar polar magnetism to which Earth is exposed, and below it, it is broken down into blue north pole, red south pole, with the yellow average traced between them. In 2015, along with co-authors Dr. Holloman from Ohio State and Dr. Uyen from NASA, the spikes in force and reversals of polarity were seen to occur around the time of the largest earthquakes. So for example, here is what happened from 2010 to 2014. Every magnitude 8 in that stretch is on here, and they hit four straight positive peaks of the red southern fields, and then on the right, a reversal of polarity of the solar fields. That is what the study identified for almost the entire period. 80% of all magnitude 8 earthquakes on record have struck within days of one of these events that only happen a few times a year. In other words, you can look at the spikes and reversals of the solar polar fields and pick out about the 20 or 30% of days closest to them, and yet you'll get three to four times the expected number of magnitude 8 earthquakes hitting those times versus what you would expect by random, meaning they're not randomly distributed. Now let's just look at 2016 through now. We are coming out of solar maximum polarity reversals and into more proper yearly oscillations and exposed strength. Last year the earthquake drought ended as the northern fields exited their trough and rose towards their positive peak with the Mexico 8.2 right at the apex. To the right of that apex, the maximum curve, you see the dip back down of the blue line and we're back into another earthquake drought in 2018, as we mentioned at the beginning. We do have northern fields expected to go even higher this year, so a ways to go on the rise, but that peak of magnetism is upcoming in the later months of the year, likely a double peak around September and October, with a polarity reversal in yellow coming up in late July or August. We're going to be paying close attention over the coming weeks. Now, while sunspots are expected to remain largely absent the remainder of the year, there is potential for one of those upticks like we had in September 2017, and if that occurs again this year from August to early October, and the polar fields are either in the process of reversing or peaking in strength, the Earth should be considered at excess risk for another magnitude 8 event. Notable that the magnitude 7 events would have likely returned in the weeks beforehand. So that is an expected extension of the current low activity period. The drought is probably going to last a bit longer. A return of the magnitude 7 events should be coming in the weeks ahead, and then pay close attention to the solar polar fields and the sunspots. Runs of obvious patterning like this are peppered throughout the entire data record, only a few misses sprinkled in here and there. The goal today has been to deliver the background and to set the stage to see if another one of those patterns is emerging now and to hopefully be able to forecast the period of next great seismic activity.